ball crossover. Y'all ready? Y'all ready to love our city? Welcome. I'm so glad you guys are here for our brand new series, Love Our City. Uh, we're going to be looking at the commands of Jesus where he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, mind, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Now, a lot of us will say, that's cool. I can do that. That's easy. I, I want to put God in my life first, and, and I want to love my neighbor. I want to be good at that. But how many of y'all know it's not always easy to do those things? So let's be honest. So we're going to unpack that over these next number of weeks and talk about how we can get better at that and what we're going to do. But before we get to the how, before we get to the what, we got to talk about the why. Why do we do this? Why do we do Love Our City? And, and, and so I, I think the best way to show you guys, the best way to describe that is to show you a story of impact. Actually, a couple stories of impact in this video. And this is some people from right here in our community that were touched because of you guys. So turn your eyes to the screen. This is why we do it, y'all. Hi guys, I'm Linda and I'm a senior at USF. I'm a peer educator at the Financial Education Center on campus as well as the president of the Financial Planning Association also on campus. So I'm at Crossover today because a friend of mine, Hannah, was introduced to Love Our City while shopping at Aldi. Just to give you guys an idea of how something like Love Our City can impact someone in unexpected ways, I'll tell you a little bit about my story. So my first time coming to Crossover wasn't actually a service. Hannah invited me to a chosen women's gathering. I hadn't returned to Crossover until about another month or so when I actually attended the service. Uh, after the service, I was introduced to the college group where I was so shocked by how receptive and how warm their welcome was to me. It was cool to be around a bunch of like-minded and same age individuals myself and they wanted to help me with my walk with Christ and they just opened their arms to me and loved on me. Later on, I got connected to the group and I started attending weekly Bible studies and it was just really cool to have a support group that helped me with my walk with Christ. So a couple months later, I was actually baptized at Crossover and eventually I had completed the growth track. And it's funny to think that this all started from Love Our City. It's been about a year and I'm really excited to participate in this year's Love Our City so that I can help someone who's in the same position that I once was in. How many of y'all are ready to go reach some more people like Linda and like Hannah? That's what we're going to do over these next number of weeks. That, that's the why right there. So, so what is the what? What are we going to do and, and how are we going to do it? So somebody say four things. So there's four things I want to ask you to do over these next 30 days so we could do this together. We could level up. We could reach more people than we ever have. So first thing is really an easy one. That's just be here on Sundays. So the next four Sundays, we're going to be going through the Love Our City series. We're going to be unpacking that and looking at the words of Jesus. How can we get better at that? So the next four Sundays between now and then it's going to culminate. The big celebration is going to be on Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, four weeks from today. Um, second thing is we want everybody to take the 30-day challenge. What's the 30-day challenge? They talked about it just a minute ago in announcements. We want everybody to get a Love Our City book. How many of y'all got a book so far? Raise your hand if you got a book. Okay, so good number you, but a lot of you still don't have one. We want everybody to get a book and go through the book together with us. This book is actually a 30-day devotional book. So we're going to start reading it together as a church tomorrow. If you're worshiping online with us, you can get this on Amazon or Kindle. You can jump in with us as well. But if you're here physically, you can get in the lobby. Don't need 12 bucks or two for 20. You want to get one with a friend. Uh, and you might be here today and you're like, you know what, Pastor T, I want to get one, but I just, I didn't come prepared. I don't have the money right now. If you're honestly, like you can't afford it, we, will, we still want to give you one. Because there's several people, even this morning, there's one guy that bought five books today. And he's like, here, I already bought one for me and my wife, but here's, I want to buy five for some other people right now that, that, that maybe don't have the money. I, I want everybody to be able to go through this. So there's several people that paid it forward, and we have a stack of books. So if that's you, don't feel bad about it. Only somebody say if. Yeah. Only if you commit that you're really going to read it. Don't get a book. Don't get a free book and then don't read it, right, you know, just because you didn't have no skin in the game. Like somebody else got this for you. So we want everybody to leave today with one of these in their, in their hands. We're going to start it tomorrow. We're going to level up together. Um, the third thing out of the four, uh, like we just heard, growth groups. There's less than 100 spots. I think there's probably about maybe 70 spots left in growth groups. So if you want to jump in and be part of a growth group, uh, the growth groups are meeting different nights of the week, different parts of the city. Today's the last chance to sign up for growth groups um, because they actually start tomorrow. 
uh, also the book. If you want to like read it with us, like you got to get it today. And if you get it next week, then you're going to have a lot of catching up to do, right? And so then the fourth thing, um, the, the what, what are we going to do? How are we going to do this? The fourth thing is a really exciting piece that all of us can do, and that's uh, the week of the 15th through the 20th is Love Our City Week. We have 150 different projects we're doing in the community. And so we, we just looked and said, who lives in this neighborhood? Okay, so we put up on a whiteboard. We got college students and business people, and we have homeless people. We have tourists. We have immigrants. We have uh, seniors. We have people in poverty. We have families. We have all kinds of people that live right around the church. They work here. They live here. They play here. And so we said, man, we want to do a bunch of projects to reach all of the city. Because if you look around the room here today, this represents all the city. It's not just one skin color, not just one people group. Uh, this is a give, give it up for yourself, y'all. This is a beautiful, this is a beautiful scene, what I'm seeing here right now. And that's because we love, we love all of our city. And so there's going to be all kinds of different projects. If, uh, we have service projects, pay it forward projects, and appreciation lunches. Uh, we're going to be doing lunch for over a thousand uh, different teachers, police officers, firefighters, people that work at the hospital. Uh, that's the lunches that we're going to be doing. Some of the pay it forward projects, we're going to go to Starbucks. We're going to buy everybody's coffee for an hour. We're going to go to the gas station. We're going to get people's gas. We're going to go to the grocery store. Uh, like we met Hannah in the video. We're going to pay for some people's groceries. We're going to do all kinds of random acts of kindness. Uh, we're going to show up at a couple thousand homes and knock on the door and bring up a bag of groceries. For what? It's Love Our City Week. You didn't hear about it? We're all going to have the shirts on. And, um, and one of my favorites is the laundromat. We show up at the laundromat with $500 worth of quarters, and we say, hey, we're here. We're going we're gonna to take care of your laundry today. And people are like, what? Oh, yeah? Oh, hold on a second. Hey, you need to come down to the laundromat right now. You need to bring everything, you know. People start showing up and, like, opening up their trunk. They're bringing out comforters and curtains. They, they go into their storage unit bringing stuff. Like, like, I mean, let's wash everything, right? But we have an amazing, amazing week of all kinds of organic opportunities where God shows up and touches people right there. And people ask for prayer, and they just, we, it's all kinds of divine appointments and spiritual moments that happen. So how many of y'all ready for that? How many of y'all ready for what God is about to do, y'all? And so, so, oh, let me mention this, and here, here's, here's one of the best parts why, why you're going to want to serve, because you get one of these. Everybody gets a free t-shirt. And so, so here's the thing. We want to invite you all to serve. And we want to invite you to invite someone else to come with you that doesn't go to church. Not your friend that goes to another church. No offense, but we want you to target some people that don't go to church. Maybe you've been trying to get them to come to church, but they won't come. Anybody have someone like that? You've been trying to get them come, but they just haven't come yet. Maybe they'll come and serve on a project, though. Because you say, hey, you get a free t-shirt. We're just going to go serve these people at this project. You pick it out together. And if they show up for that, they get their shirt and serve with you. And then they're given an invite because everybody's getting an invite to the party, the Love Our City party. You know when the party is? It's the Sunday after that. It's Easter Sunday. And so, you know, God, God moves every year through even the people that serve on the projects, let alone the people that we touch. So Easter Sunday, we're going to have a big party. How many of y'all know we like to party? We like to party at Crossover. Easter Sunday, we're going to celebrate the resurrection. We're going to share the gospel in a creative, compelling way. Uh, we're expecting hundreds and hundreds of guests to be here for the first time from people that we touched that week. So, so here's what I want to also ask you to do. Pray. Pray that God is going to use us. Pray, pray he's going to use us as we read this book and we get the theology of why we should love our neighbor. He's going to prepare us. He's going to prepare the people's hearts as we touch them in this community, all leading up to what's going to happen on Resurrection Sunday. It's going to be awesome, right? Y'all ready? Okay, I want everybody to stand up. Stand up one more time real quick because we're going to pray. We're going to just pray over this series, pray a prayer, a blessing upon what God is about to do in our lives and in, in the live, lives of our church and in our city and our community. How many of y'all know we can change this city? We can change this city. We're about to change this city and shift some things in the atmosphere. So I want to ask somebody to come out and pray, someone that was reached through the first Love Our City that we did two years ago. So y'all give it up for my man, John Punch. So John Punch, John Punch moved into the neighborhood, and he saw all the people wearing these shirts and was like, man, like, I got to go check out that church. 
And now, long story short, fast forward to today, now he leads our college ministry, if you didn't know. So give it up for our college students right here. And the students in that video were impacted as a result of we have a college ministry now. And so we believe we're going to reach hundreds of more college students in this next year. Amen? So, so grab your neighbor's hands. We're going to do this as family. Let's pray together. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to love the city of Tampa. We pray that as we begin this, this series that you, God, would meet with us each week. We pray your blessings over the Love Our City, love our city series, God. We pray that you would come and do something awesome. God, we pray in advance for the, the projects and the outreaches that are, that are going to occur. We pray that yes, lives God. will be changed yes, and transformed. God. God, we're believing for souls to be saved and yeah. for the kingdom of God That's right. to increase mm. through what we do here. Lord, you're an awesome God. We thank you again for giving us the opportunity to serve. And we just, we do this because we want to see your kingdom grow here yeah. in this place. Thank you, God, for crossing us over from death unto life. In Jesus' name, yes, amen. 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 Come on, y'all. Give God some praise. Give your neighbor a high five and tell him, love our city. Love our city. Appreciate you, bro. All right, so I know a lot of y'all excited. Y'all ready to go hit the block? You ready to go out there and do what we're going to do? It's going to be amazing. But many times when we say, man, we want to love our city, we get excited, we get fired up. The problem is, though, many times we don't always follow through. Why don't we follow through? You know why? Because you have some problems. I have some problems. Look to the person next to you and tell them you have problems. Don't get arrogant. Now look back at that same person and say, so do I. Tell them, pray for me. Pray for me. I need prayer. So here's the truth, y'all. We all have some problems. So I want to invite you guys to take some notes. And we're going to look at some of our problems that we have today that stop us from loving our city and loving our neighbor as we love ourselves. Here's the first thing, y'all. One of our biggest problems is our resources. Our resources. Really? Really, Pastor T? Yeah. Because they, they could be a blessing or... They can be a burden. Now, now I could go a whole bunch of different directions with that, that, that statement, right? But, but let's go to God's word. I want, I want to tackle it that way and look at what does is, what is God's word say? We're going to put a spotlight on one of our biggest problems. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 17 to 19 is what we're going to look at. And Paul is having a conversation with his spiritual son, with Timothy. And he's telling him like, hey, Timothy, my son, this is how you should live your life. This is how you should lead. This is how you should run your ministry. This is what you should do. And look at what it says starting in, in verse 17. It says, teach those who are, are what? In this world not to be proud and not to trust in their, which is so unreliable. Their trust should be in who? God. Who richly gives us all we need for our enjoyment. Tell them to use their money to do good. They... They should be rich in good works and generous to those in need, always being ready to share with others. By doing this, they'll be storing up their treasure as a good foundation for the future so that they may experience true life. So when we read this passage, I think a lot of us can automatically say, yeah, Timothy, I feel you, those rich people, those rich people, right? Like, like they, they should be better at sharing and doing good stuff. Yeah, those rich people. Yeah, they got all this stuff. They don't know what to do with it. They spending their money on crazy stuff. Yeah, hashtag rich people problems. So, so that's what we think when we look at this passage and we think those people. Because we, we certainly think they're not, they're not talking about me because I'm just, I'm just trying to get by. I mean, some of y'all might be here saying, man, I'm, I, I'm struggling right now. My hashtag is hashtag the struggle is real. <laughs> like, this, this is not definitely not about me. But if you're here today, if you're worshiping online with us today, you're rich. You're absolutely filthy rich. You are. Now, I know some of y'all are like, oh, I see what you're doing there, Pastor T. Uh, you're talking about we spiritually rich because, you know, we got a relationship with Jesus. No, I'm not talking about your spiritual relationship with God. I'm talking about your physical reality globally, your cash, money, and your possessions. You're rich. 
Because most of you woke up this morning and you had a roof over your head, you had electricity, you had running water, you had air conditioning, you had heat for some of y'all that you think got a little bit cold. Uh, you probably came here in a car today. You ate some food today. When you woke up today, you got to go to your closet and pick out what you're going to wear to come to church. Well, guess what? Two-thirds of the world didn't get to do that this morning. So we have luxuries that there's 7 billion people on this planet, and we have luxuries than more than what most people have, but we don't even think about that. We don't even realize how blessed we are because you know why? Because we have this. You got one of these? Pull it out. Pull it out. Show me your phone. Some of y'all taking notes on your phone. That's good. Because we got one of these. And so this is a blessing and a burden sometimes, right? Because now we got everything at our fingertips, right? We could do everything from this almost, right? I, I mean, we, we, can, we can go to Amazon. We can shop on here. We can order a ride. We can order a meal on here. I mean, we can, we can watch a game on here. We can listen to music. Uh, we, can, we can watch a movie on here. I mean, we could do all this right at our fingertips, and we get spoiled. Then we also can go to our social media feeds on Instagram or Facebook, and we can see what everybody else has. And there's always somebody that has more, right? And, and, and remember, everything on social media is generally the highlights of people's lives. So we can look at that and say, oh, I don't have all that. And then we can get spoiled, and we can forget how blessed that we are. Well, there's this website called globalrichlist.com, and it kind of gives you an idea of where you land on a global wealth scale. And I don't know if it's 100% accurate, but I think it's, they say it's pretty close, right? So for fun, real quick, let's pop that up real quick. So globalrichlist.com, okay, so it says select location. Let's put on there United States. This is the U.S., so, you know, USA, the U.S. dollar, Okay, so enter annual net income. So they say statistically in the United States, a family of four, the poverty level is right around $24,000, $25,000. So let's say you were just at the poverty line, your household income with everything that comes in. So type in $25,000 right there, and let's see where that comes up on the global rich list. Let's see our results, what they are. You are in the top. Give me a drum roll, everybody. Come on. Come on, Internet. It's a little slow. It's just a little slow. Come on. Res results. There we go. Woo! Top 2%. Even if you're a family in poverty. Wow. In just a second there, we were all starting to get a little frustrated because we're like, man, that slow internet. <laughs> See the stuff we complain about? That, that's what I was thinking. I'm like, come on, man. This has got to go smooth. Or, like, it took a little longer, man. It's like dial-up internet. A lot of people don't have internet. Period, right? Okay, so, so let's say you, you're, you're above that. Let's just double that. What if your family income between, if you, you're, you're married and you got two people in the household, you got a couple jobs, let's bump that up. Let's double it. Let's say it's 50000 Let's say your annual income that comes into your household is $50,000 a year. Let's see, let's see what you show up then on the results. Wow. You know how they have all that stuff about the, the 1%, the top 1%? Oh, the 1%ers, oh, must be nice. A lot of you, most of you, are probably in the top 1%. And if you're not, you ain't far behind. You're in the 2%, maybe the 3%. Like, like we're all very rich. Look at the person next to you and tell them, you're rich. So you can go home and play with that. Don't, don't start looking at it. Don't play with it now during church. Some of y'all got ADD. You're like, oh, let me put mine in there. Oh, don't look at mine. You know. Only reason you should be on your phone is if you're taking notes right now on the app. All right, so my point is, though, is we are extremely, we're blessed. And many times we take it for granted. So we have all these resources, but many times we feel broke because our culture is always pushing us to get the next new thing and to get more and more. And so many times we're out there chasing the more, and then we won't share with our neighbors, and we won't give to God's kingdom, and we won't help someone, and we don't have time to serve because we're, we're doing so much trying to get more, trying to level up, and we're just chasing after more. And, and like the richest man in the world said, King Solomon, is he found when he got everything without God, it was meaningless. It was meaningless. It wasn't all that it was cracked up to be. King Solomon said that. Another great theologian from Brooklyn, New York, his name was uh, uh, Biggie Smalls. He said, more money, more problems. I was in Brooklyn last week, and I took a picture next to this big Biggie mural. I uh, put it on my Facebook, and so people were like, big, yeah, you know. But it's true, right? 
You get more stuff many, many times and you have to put more money and more time and more effort into maintaining that stuff. And then many times we don't want to stay in one place, right? We always want to level up, get a little more. And, and so it could be just this endless chase if we're not careful. Now let me say this, y'all. Being rich is not bad because we're all rich in here. I'm not saying we're all bad because we have stuff. Not at all. Although money can be dangerous, as we saw in these verses, it could be possible to be both good and rich, like you talked about. If we could be generous people and our hope can be focused on God and we have the right place and priority of where our material things are, if we can learn to own things instead of letting them own us, right? We use things in letting, instead of letting them use us. We learned last week that who owns everything anyways? Who owns it? God owns it. We just get to hold it for a little while if we can be good managers, if we could do well with it, if we could be generous. This passage shows us our blessings don't have to be a burden. Our resources don't have to be a burden. They could be a multiplied blessing. Somebody say multiplied. multiplied. As we can use them to better love our neighbors and better love God. And so there's four gems that we can see out of these verses, four nuggets. So four things I want to give you guys today. Number one is this, guard against pride. Guard against pride. Paul says this in verse 16. He says, teach those who are rich in this world not to be prideful, <laughs> not to be proud. And we already established, who's the rich people? We are. It's us. So when we have resources, many times we can get prideful because then we can get in this mindset, in this independent vibe like, look what I did. Look what I earned. Look what I deserve. Look what I got. And we could get in this whole I, 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 me, me, mine, mine, instead of no. Look, look at what God did. Look at what he did. And now I'm all about you earning things and, and, and achieving things and having confidence. I'm all about that. But as long as you're also pointing to God and giving him the credit. Because he's the one who gave you the skills, the talent, the ability, the energy, the connection, the divine appointments, all those things. But when we leave God out of the picture and we take all the credit, it can get dangerous. So the Bible tells us that pride comes before a what? A fall. <laughs> comes before a fall. How many of y'all have ever seen somebody fall before? How many of y'all have ever fallen before when you got prideful, right? Be honest, okay? We got a lot of honest people. 1030 service, right? So guard your heart against pride. The second thing we see is this. In the second part of verse 16 is trust in God and not in our money. Trust in God, not in our money. And Paul says this, not to trust in their money, which is so unreliable, they, their trust should be in God, who richly gives us all that we need for our enjoyment. How many guys have ever lost some money before? Like as fast as it comes in, man, it can go out, right? So over the last decade, or, or maybe 11 or 12 years especially, uh, people have lost millions and millions of dollars in real estate, in the stock market, and all kinds of different investments. Because guess what? Uh, investments in the world, they always go like this. They always go up and down. I mean, there's cycles. It's part of it. But see, if you have your trust and your source is in your money and your bank account and your investments, then it's going to go like this at some point. And then how are you going to act? Because there's people that have lost millions and millions of dollars sometimes when some of these different market corrections happen. And you can look in the news and some of the wealthiest people in the world, they've committed suicide. They've off themselves. They've killed themselves because they just couldn't deal with, oh, my goodness, I just lost all my money now. You're just going to kill yourself? And if they don't kill themselves, then they're in depression and they're turning to all kinds of substance abuse and they're having to go to rehab and their life is just a mess. And it's like, but they got all this stuff. Or they got less stuff than they had before, but now they're just, they're just all messed up. That's what happens when you put your trust in stuff instead of in God. Now, when I first got married, me and my wife, we, we were young and broke, right? Anybody know about that? When you first get married, you're just trying to get started. And so my dad, all the college students are like, yes, <laughs> right? So my dad had recently just made some investments. Pastor Christopher, he made these investments uh, on futures. The stock, it's, it's a certain kind of stock called futures. It could be very lucrative, very profitable, but very risky. And so my dad was listening to this radio show, and he heard about it through this radio advertisement. Be careful. 
thought some of those radio advertisements. And so he called this investment line and, you know, figured it out and was like, okay, you know. So my dad put in some money, and within 30 days, the money doubled. And he took it out, and he reinvested most of it. And at 30 days later, about 35 days later, it doubled again. My dad made like 20 G's in like two months. And, you know, so he's telling me about, all about this. I'm like, yo. I'm like, that's what's up. You know, how I get in, you know? And he's like, well, tell you what, you got to get some money together, you know, but, you know, we had just got married. And he's like, you got any money? I'm like, we got a little bit of wedding money, but we're going to pay off some bills and do some stuff with that. And my wife was like, we ain't touching that wedding money. <laughs> and I was like, but babe, he made like 20 G's. Like, this could be the answer from God. I was young and dumb, and I didn't pray enough. So we scraped up $1,000. That was a lot of money to us. And then my dad said, hey, I'm going to give you 1000 as well. So we had $2,000, and we invested it in uh, a future of corn. It was a stock in corn, right? And so, you know, I never, I never cared about corn before, right? But Jesus said, like, like, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So then guess what I was thinking about every day? <laughs> How's that corn doing? I was so cheap and broke, I didn't even get the newspaper because we didn't even have the internet, but this was the 90s, right? So, so I would stop at the convenience store on the way to church every day, and I knew how to look in the stock section and find the corn future and look to see where it was at. And it was going up. I was like, hallelujah, look at that. Look at the Lord. He is good. His mercy endureth forever. So that 2,000, it crept up to like 3,000. I'm like, I'm like, see, babe, look, see, I told you, it was gonna be, this is gonna be great. And I had it all mapped out. Like when it doubles, we're gonna pull it out. I'm gonna pay off all the debt. We're gonna save a little bit. We're gonna reinvest some more. Then after that, we're gonna do this. And I had it mapped out for the next three years of my life. I'm like, this is a, this is from God. Then guess what started happening to that corn stock? I don't know, it wasn't raining or something. I don't know what. I'm like, God, just help, help the corn. I don't know nothing about corn. I'm a city boy. So started going down, was going down. It was over $3,000, and then suddenly now it was down to $2,000. I'm like, that's what we put in there. Then it was below $2,000. I was like, I was like, yo, called the broker. I'm like, hey, what's going on with the corn? <laughs> He's like, oh, don't worry about it. It goes up and down. This kind of stuff happens. You know, it'll be okay. It should probably bump up in the next week or two. It's going to be all right. But guess what? It, it kept going down and down. And a couple months later, the account was at zero. I didn't even get like $10 back. It was gone, all of it. And it was like, and my wife was like, so what's up with that corn? She was like, that was a corny investment. Anyways, so the only thing I could say that came out of it, besides that bad joke, was, was the broker ended up feeling so bad, I had just came out with my first album, it was a cassette. He ordered a cassette. And, and sent him a cassette in the mail. So I don't know, maybe that planted a seed and some corn grew out, I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> but man, I, it was rough, y'all. It, it was rough. It was rough. So, so here, here's, what, here's what Paul says. Paul talks about this in the second letter to Corinthians in chapter one, starting in verse three. He says this, he says, all praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. So our bank account shouldn't be our comfort. Our investment shouldn't be our comfort, shouldn't be our security, but it says God is the source of our comfort. And he comforts us in troubles so that we can comfort who? We can comfort other people, right? And when they're troubled, we'll be able to give them the same comfort that God has given us. So if I trust in my bank account, if I trust in my money, if I trust in my investments for comfort or security, I'm going to be let down at some point or another, because um, it's always gonna go up and down. But when I trust in God, he can comfort me through good times, through bad times, through the ups and downs of life, he's there. And like Paul says here, the comfort's not just for us, but it's also for who? For others. So when God does something in our life, like we're supposed to share that with other people as well. And so, you know, that, that's what Love Our City is about. We're gonna be sharing and loving on our neighbors. and so. Uh, these verses in Timothy, uh, Paul says this. He says, we should put our trust in God who gives us all that we need uh, for our enjoyment. Do you know that God wants us to enjoy life? 
I think sometimes we have this picture of God. He's up there, and he's just ready to stomp us if we have fun. There's some people that come to church. They come to Crossover Church, and they're like, this was, this was, not, this was not godly because it was fun. <laughs> like, I'm supposed to just go to church and feel bad. That's what some people feel. Some people, I mean, yes, we talk about sin, and we talk about God's anger and wrath sometimes. Yes, because, yes, sin is bad, right? But there's also a lot of good things to celebrate, and God loves us. He doesn't want us to experience his wrath, and that's why he sent Jesus, so we could have new life, and we could be forgiven, and we could, we could have destiny, right? God will supply everything that we need for our enjoyment. God wants us to enjoy life. He wants us to enjoy him. He wants us to enjoy church and fellowship and worship and hearing God's word and connecting with other people. He wants us to enjoy that. Here's the third thing that we see, y'all, from these verses. Use our resources to do good and be ready to share. Verse 18 says, tell them to use their money to do good. They should be rich in good works and generous to those that are in need. And always, somebody say always. Always, always be ready to share with those that are in need. And, and this is, guys, this is our focus and our action steps of Love Our City. It's our focus, our action steps. Uh, we want to be good managers of our, our resources, our time, our talent, our treasure. We want to learn to be more generous. We want to use our resources to help other people. And so here's the thing. If you've asked around, church doesn't always have a good reputation, does it? How many of y'all have ever invited somebody to church and you just got a crazy look? And they were like, uh... Uh, yeah, I did a workshop yesterday at a conference. I was really talking about uh, why millennials are leaving the church or not coming to the church. If you don't know what millennial, millennials are, they're people in their 20s and 30s. And if you look around the room today here at Crossover, we got a lot of people that fit in that category. Give God some praise for that. Our church is alive, it's growing, it's thriving. But a lot of millennials, a lot of younger generation, uh, there's a number of reasons why they're leaving the church or they're not coming to church, period. Uh, but some of the interesting reasons are, uh, one of the things is because a lot of churches, they don't have a good reputation. They don't do anything in the community. Uh, younger generations, they want to serve. They want to be involved in social justice. They want to help people in their community. A lot of them are involved in advocacy for all kinds of different causes that the church is also supposed to be about many of those things as well, right? The church is supposed to be about justice. Many times Christianity can separate justice and the gospel, but if you understand the gospel and the good news of Jesus and you have a relationship with them and it transforms you, then you should be all about justice, because Jesus said to learn to love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's justice right there. So just like you're trying to, you know, do good things in your life and level up for your family and, you know, make moves, um, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Uh, somebody say as. as. As is the key word. That's the hard word. So just like you're trying to level up, can you be just as passionate to see your neighbor level up? That's justice. When you want to see your neighbor have an opportunity when you want to see them move forward in their life, in their marriage, in their calling. If more believers were about that, the church of Jesus Christ would have a whole different reputation, wouldn't it? A lot of younger generations, uh, they don't want to plug into churches because it's segregated. Yeah, a lot of statistics and research shows that because the younger generations, they're used to being in environments where it's mixed. It's multi-ethnic, work, school, everywhere they go, their group of friends. 85% of churches in America are still segregated. Now that's changing, praise God, but look around this room today. This is a glimpse of heaven. This is what God has called the church to be. You can come here, it doesn't matter what you look like, you'll find somebody here that looks like you. Your skin color, your economic bracket, your, you know, your age, we got a big melting pot of people, and that's what happens, y'all, when you love all of your city. Not just people that look like you, but you love everybody, and our church is, is very, very big on that. And so, uh, so we're trying to change the narrative because I even meet people on a regular basis, and then when they find out that I'm a pastor, then they're like, I'm like, what? I didn't do nothing to you. <laughs> like, first of all, they're like, you're a pastor, you know, but then they're like, well, I don't do church or I don't do organized religion or, you know, and then many times they'll begin to tell me a story of something that happened 
by a Christian or at a church or some kind of misunderstanding or, you know, and that's not always the case. Sometimes people just make excuses. Uh, but many times it's even the narrative that the media paints the picture about the church. Well, guess what, y'all? The church can change that narrative. Amen? Amen. We've got to change that. And so good news is, like, we're spreading this movement. And there's a lot of churches serving and doing great things. Uh, but God has called us to spread the Love Our City movement. And uh, as of right now, there's 136 churches that have gotten a Love Our City box kit that are making a commitment to do Love Our City this year. So give God some praise. So we're trying to help churches change the narrative, change the reputation uh, of the church and of God's people. And so when you, when you do a random act of kindness, it can break down all the walls and barriers that someone has. And it can begin to change the storyline, right? So see, our, our culture, our world, the, the, the worldly cultures there, they only want to love you if they're going to get love back. So they love because they're going to get love back. But God's culture, God's kingdom, his is like, uh, you love, you give, not to get, but you give to give. Because God gave us Jesus. He gave, him, he gave it to us when we, we, we didn't deserve it, we didn't earn it. Like, he gave us everything that we need. He gave us grace, he gave us love, he gave us mercy. And so now, like, it's our honor, it's our privilege to give back and serve other people and share that love and share that comfort that Paul talked about with other people and share that love so people can find that. Amen? Amen. So let's be about that, y'all. So here's the last thing, the fourth thing that we see, y'all. And we're going to talk about more about planting those seeds and that harvest next week. But the fourth thing that we see is this is the best eternal ROI that we can get with our resources. ROI, what's that mean? Return on investment. Y'all good. Y'all good. Verse 19, it says this. It says, by doing this, by sharing, by being generous, they'll be storing up their treasure as a good foundation for the future so that they may experience true life. So, listen, you can invest your money on all kinds of things here on earth. Real estate, stock, you know, companies, all kinds. And, and I'm all for investing in things that appreciate. We talked about that a few weeks ago, right? That's great. And you can pass that on to your kids, but here's one thing you can't do with any of that stuff. You can't take it with you. None of that stuff you can take it with you. So as you're investing and leveling up and doing some things, keep it in the right perspective that it's only for a little while. Don't put too much focus and time on that. Focus on the stuff that's investment for the future, for eternity, stuff that you can take with you. Because the old saying says, I ain't never seen a hearse that has a U-Haul behind it, right? The Egyptians tried that. It didn't work out too good, did it? Tried to put all their riches and gold in the pyramids, and people came in and stole it. Took it. You can't take it with you. But you can take with you eternal investments when you're serving people, when you're loving people, you're, you're loving your neighbor. It's furthering God's kingdom. Paul says something here about storing up treasure for the future. Uh, and, but Jesus also says something similar. In, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 through 21, um, Jesus said this. He said, don't store up your treasures here on earth where moths can eat them, rust destroys them, and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy, thieves do not break in and steal. Key part here, wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will be also. So if your treasure is always just in this stuff here, that's what you're going to think about. That's where your heart's going to be. But if your treasure, if you're putting it in God's kingdom and God's work and loving your neighbor, thinking about the future, then guess what? That's where your heart's going to be. And that's the best investment that you can make for eternity. That's the best one, y'all. When we love our city and we love our neighbor, we're storing up treasure for eternity, treasure for the future. The scripture even says when we just give a cup of cold water to somebody in Jesus' name, guess what? God remembers that. He'll, he's going to reward that in the future. So all these different things that we're going to do for Love Our City Week, literally, we're going to do some of that. We're going to give away bottled water at, at the traffic lights all throughout the, the community. That's going to be some of the projects that we're going to do. And, man, sometimes people, man, they love it. They're like, oh, man, a bottle of water, that's great. That's, that's awesome. But we do that in the name of Jesus, and, man, that's impacting somebody's eternity. It's impacting your eternity. So we're blessed with resources, y'all. And where much is given, much is what? Where much is given, much is? is required. So to us that are here today, much has been given to us. We're blessed. We're rich. 
in many different ways. And so much is required. Like, what are we going to do with those things? How are we going to level up? How are we going to serve our city and love our city and reach more people for Jesus? So here's what we're going to do as we get ready to close today. Something a little bit different. I want to invite the First Impressions team to come on down. And they're going to pass out to you guys um, a, a little commitment card. And this is a Love Our City card that we want to give to you guys. And this is not something that you're going to turn in. You're not turning this in. This isn't for the church or for us. This is for you. And so what we want you to do with this in just a moment, I'm going to explain it. Uh, we want you to just take this and sign it and check off the things that you're committing to do over these next 30 days. And we want you to put it somewhere where you can see it. So maybe that's up on your refrigerator. Maybe that's on the dashboard of your car. Uh, maybe that's, if, if you're in school, maybe that's in your locker. If you're always looking at your computer, maybe that's you tape it to your, your, your laptop or something. Somewhere where you're going to see this regularly to remind you of these commitments that you're making um, to be better at loving your neighbor as you love ourselves, as we get ready to love our city. So there's four simple things on there. So four simple things. The first one, if this is you and you're saying, man, I'm committing to be here every Sunday. Just check that off. That's an easy one. It's easy to show up here. All right, second one is I'm, I'm committing to take the 30-day challenge. I'm going to get a Love Our City book. I'm going to get one. We're going to start reading this together tomorrow. Uh, we're going to be talking about it, sharing about it with each other, post some stuff on Facebook. I'm going to probably be posting up some Facebook live videos about it. So get a book. Get a book today. Take the 30-day challenge. Some of you, you haven't read a book in a long time. So read this book together with us. It's easy, y'all. The third thing on there, maybe this one's not for everybody. It can't be because we don't have enough space for everybody. But if you want to get in a growth group, there's still some space left. Uh, jump in a growth group. And we're going to be unpacking uh, the Love Our City book and discussing it and some different questions. It's going to be really good. If, if you don't go to a growth group, you can still watch those videos every week online. It's inside of the book. It has the link. There's some stuff for you to fill in. You can do that in your own time. Maybe discuss it with your family. And the fourth one is that you're going to commit to be part of a Love Our City project on Love Our City Week. Listen, that's something everybody can do. That's easy. It's only 60 to 90 minutes. You get a free shirt. You can bring your friend with you. Go to loveourcity.info. Pick out a project that you're passionate about that fits into your time frame. Um, projects are going to fill up quickly. So I suggest you go this week. Get first dibs because once those projects fill up, um, they close. They'll just disappear off of there. And just the ones that are still available will, will, will be up. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to decide right now. I'm going to give you just a moment. Check off which ones that you're going to do, you're committing to today. Hopefully you're going to do uh, at least three of them, maybe all of them. And then I want you to sign that. So go ahead and just take a moment and do that. So I want you to take that card, if you're finished with it now, or as soon as you finish, if you're still signing it or checking it off, um, I want you to take it and hold it up. And we're going to pray over those cards right now. It's so all around the room. Hold up those cards. If you're worshiping online at home, um, you didn't get a card, but you can write these things down, those four simple things, and make a commitment to do that with us as well. Let's pray. Father, we love you today. God, I, I pray for each person that's here physically. Each person is watching this online and worshiping with us at home. God, we pray for these next 30 days that you're going to transform us. God, as we come here and we attend these services and we worship you, we hear your word, we're learning together, we're tracking through this series to learn to be better neighbors and to learn to put you first, God. God, grow us. And God, I pray as, as we get a book and we read this book and we take the 30-day challenge, God, I pray that every day as we're reading some scripture, as we're reflecting on some real life issues that we're going through, that our neighbors are going through, God, show us new things. Help us to grow. Help us to learn the biblical theology of why we should love our neighbors. So it won't just be a 30-day thing or a project, but this will be a lifestyle change for us that we'll begin to look at our neighbors and look at our city in a totally different way. We'll look through the eyes of Jesus. So God, as we make this commitment, help us to follow through. Help us to carve out that 10, 15 minutes a day to just read a couple pages and reflect and pray. 
And God, those that are called to be in a group, God, I pray that they'll, they'll make time. They'll carve out that time to be in a growth group. They'll sign up today. They'll get plugged in as groups start tomorrow. And Father, lastly, we pray for Love Our City, the serving week. God, we thank you for the vision of it and what you've done the last two years and the tens of thousands of people that have been impacted. But God, we're lifting up this year because, God, we're believing you're going to show up in an even greater way. You're going to use us in an even larger way. We're praying to have 1,500 people serve at 150 projects, God. And you've been providing all the provision for the vision. We thank you for that. But God, we pray for the people and we pray for our hearts. Get us ready. And we pray for those people that are out there like Linda and like Hannah and like John Punch and so many others that are part of our family now that have been touched. God, we pray you'll prepare their hearts and their minds and set up divine appointments. God, I believe that even right now and in the next few weeks, there's people in our neighborhood and our community that are going through stuff. And God, they're, they're, their hearts are crying out. They're crying out. They're, they're saying, God, like, show me you're real. Like, give me some kind of sign. Like, are you listening? And then God, use us to just show up on your behalf with an act of kindness, just at the right moment to touch someone and show them that you're real. God, use us. Get us ready. Get them ready. Get our city ready for what's going to happen. And God, we pray for the other 100 plus churches that are going to be doing Love Our City at some point this year. There's even some other churches in our city, in Tampa, that are going to be doing it, that are starting it. They're starting the book tomorrow. God, I pray for First... Uh, First Baptist Church of College Hill that's doing it. I pray for so many other churches that are, that are jumping in. God, bless them and use them. Help us to raise the level of the reputation of your bride, the church. God, we're going to be sure to give you all the credit, the honor, the praise that goes to you. God, change us and change our city. We pray this in Jesus' name. Everyone said amen. amen. Come on, y'all. Give God some praise. If you're ready to love our city today. We're going to end today our service with some celebration. We're going to get ready to, to kick off this 30 days. Tomorrow we're going to start reading the book. Um, so so we're, we're going to give today as we get ready to end, and we're going to celebrate. So I want to ask first impressions to come on down. And if you, you guys want to participate in giving today, of course, giving helps us to be able to do things like Love Our City and all the things that Crossover Church does. Uh, if you want to give physically, you can use an envelope as the bucket comes around. Uh, most of us give digitally, so you can give through the Crossover app. If you're worshiping online at home, you can give through the app as well. And give through the website. You can text to give. We have a giving kiosk as well. A lot of options. We want you to be able to jump in and, and give with us and trust God. And be generous with the resources that God has given us. So as, as you guys are giving, I, I want to say thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your giving. Um, the last number of weeks, we, we've definitely seen a lot of people are stepping out and beginning to trust God in their giving. And, and we, we've just been hearing all kinds of incredible stories. And that enables us to be able to do things like love our city and reach more people like Linda and Hannah and John and Liz. And the, just the list goes on and on. I believe there's going to be a whole bunch more people that are going to be touched and reached in these next couple of weeks. And so uh, I want to give you a praise report as well. Um, God, uh, the, the reputation of love our city keeps growing. And so God has been lining up people that want to come alongside of us. And just as a praise report, there's several companies and organizations and donors that in the last couple of weeks have stepped up and have come alongside, and they're donating to Love Our City. So give God some praise for that. The first year, all, all of the, the funding for Love Our City came through our church. Last year... Uh, about 60%, 70, almost about 65% came through Crossover Church. Uh, right now, there's over 50% that's raised actually through outside donors. And so God is like, people are coming alongside so we can do it even bigger and even better and reach even more people. So we're grateful for what God is doing. So, so I want to ask you guys to stand up around the room. Stand up, and we're going to celebrate in these last couple of moments today. And when I point to you, I simply just need you to say, love our city. Come on. Love our city. All right, so, so that, that was pretty good, but th there's a lot of people in here. I, I was in New York City last week at a church, and there wasn't, there wasn't this many people. They were a little louder than that. So come on, Tampa. We got to show them how we do it. There's a lot of people watching online right now. So come on, count to three. Love our city. Love our city. 
I didn't even count, but y'all knew. <laughs> All right, go ahead and run that. Here we go. If you've never seen Love Our City, this video is going to show you some scenes of it. I love you. Crossover, I love y'all. Y'all know that? How many of y'all love our city? That's Tampa Bay right there, the 813. Yeah. Here we go. Y'all rock with me. I used to be dirty, grimy and gritty, survival mode, self sending and when you're busy. No time for committees, trying to build my empire like Diddy, but it crushed me. It crumbled and stripped me, but God. He saved me and flipped me, rebuilt me and quickly. He rocked me, he's with me, he gave me this mission to just love my city. We're gonna love our city. That's your part. I'll always love my city. Crossover, y'all ready? We're gonna love our city. All right, y'all got it. Come on, where you at? We're gonna love our city. Uh-huh. I'll always love my city. Got right, you ready? Empower others, fathers and mothers and sisters and brothers and haters and lovers. The haters, they love us. Once they discover the hope that we cover, we see. There's no blindness. We love in our city with that said I can't miss. So should I say gay? So comes with some basils. We'll buy them coffee. You hold your pesos. We got free groceries. We'll cut your lawn. Bringing for cats that's filling with lawn. We're shirts like an army. Spreading some love. You know it's this army. We live. We crush and we smash it. 2,000 hours of volunteer passion. Day by day. We're changing this space. Soon can see innovation. Put your hands together. Where I plan to spend the rest of my days. I got plans to make it up and We're gonna make this city a better place, y'all. Cause God's with us. Come on, crossover. Come on. We're gonna love our city. I'll always love my city. Where you at? Z, where you at, man? Y'all give it up for my man Z. Part of the remix dance team, teen remix. The hip hop nutcracker prince. I love you. Let's love our city crossover. Come on, y'all give it up for Pastor Tommy and that message today. Don't leave yet. We're going to all leave together. Don't leave yet. We're going to all leave together. Just want to remind everybody as well, um, no one should be walking just yet. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, when the offering is happening, uh, for all of you that are crossover members, when the offering is happening, I want to remind you, no one should be walking other than first impressions. Uh, that is a safety and a security issue. So we want to make sure I saw a number of people walking while offering was happening. So if y'all can help us just govern yourselves accordingly, all right? So a couple reminders really fast. Everybody hold your bulletin up like this. Hold your bulletin. You have your bulletin. All right. So listen, there is lots and lots and lots of information that is in your bulletin that we need you to respond to. Uh, they, uh, the Chandra's mentioned it in the announcements earlier, but also one of the things that we did not mention in the announcements that we want to make sure all the fellows know is next Saturday is our men's breakfast. Next Saturday morning is our men's breakfast. All the men make some noise. Yeah. So next Saturday, you can go to our website and register for the breakfast. Please don't just show up. They need to know that you're coming so that they can prepare the food and know exactly how many are coming. So please make sure uh, you go to our website and re register and sign up for that. A uh, huge shout out to our new men's ministry leader, Brother Sean White. Y'all give it up for our new yeah. men's ministry leader. Yeah. Excited about his leadership and for the team that he's building with that. So we're going to put our mission statement up on the screen. It's a clear, visible reminder of what God calls us to be and to do as we leave uh, his house headed towards our houses. On the count of three, let's read it together. One, two, three. Our mission is to empower people to discover, develop, and display Jesus Christ in every area of their lives. Please give somebody a high five or a hug on your way out. Have an incredible day, everybody. God bless you.
trying